Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video, I'll be doing my AFL Fantasy Round 23 team reveal. Hopefully this time the mic actually works, as I had it like far away from, I forgot to set it up um, in the first recording of it, so it was probably echoey. So I just decided to re-record this. But anyway, um, yeah, this has been, I know a lot of other teams have had more chaos than mine. Um, currently I have, well, three guys, um, in my first 22 or my pre-selected 22 that were out so um luckily i have no donuts and no real drop in score as one of the positions was that f6 f7 spot which was um sort of pl being played off between philippu and peatling um and yeah so luckily i am pretty stocked there and i guess now um yeah, it's just uh, a little bit annoying with the two injuries that you sort of have to force trade those because they can't make up the gap in the last game. Um, it's near on impossible. So they're forced trade outs, but I'm getting a lot better tr uh, players in, I think. So at least I'm able to do get, um, get a really good Ruckman in as well as I'm pretty sure a really good defender that could really go off in the last couple of weeks. But anyway, let's just jump into this video. So... From what I remember doing in the in the first time I recorded this, uh, Lockie Whitfield, I expect to have a sort of a more damaging forward on him, not necessarily a defensive forward, but someone that's just going to try and kick goals, um, get on the scoreboard to really try and um, negate his um, influence on the game. Tom Stewart um, scored an 85 against St Kilda last time out in like round one, but I expect him to get back to this sort of really high scoring role as he had a stinker against uh, Frio, but his role is just generally really, really good. And I mean, his L5 is still 108, his L3 is still 102. Nick Newman, um, he's gotten through the arguably the tough matchup of the last four and scored a 116 and played 98% time on ground. Um, but I wouldn't surprise if he has to play more time on ground just because if we look at the AFL lineups, um, their, their, their team is stuffed. <laughs> um, their team is cooked to say the least. Their tallest forward's 189. If we just go down here, you'll see they've got Kemp, L Young, McGovern, Nick Newman, Cowan, and Wietering. That pretty much means that Newman and McGovern are going to be on kickouts. We know that um, West Coast Eagles can't kick straight half the time, so that'll be really good as well. Um, their forward line is absolutely cooked as well. <laughs> Look at this fourth line. Elijah Hollands is their key forward for the round. Solid. That is absolutely horrific. They have no keys there. Um, literally, not even, I don't think, they have any keys in their... Um, they might as well have chucked like Lewis Young forward or something like that. I, I'm surprised they didn't at least chuck one just big body guy up forward. Or even just like a, I mean, you need Paddy Cripps in the middle, but would Paddy Cripps up forward almost be better? <laughs> so yeah, they're just so stuffed. Um, but that should be better for Nick Newman as he should get more points. I wouldn't be surprised if they really try and kick it about and um, really try and slow the game down a little bit more. Um, but yeah, we'll just uh, see how that goes. But I'm backing in Nick Newman to score really well. What did he go against uh, West Coast earlier this year? Has he played them? It doesn't look like he has, which is really weird again, having a team um, not play against, uh, not playing against a team until uh, like round 23. It's quite weird. Then the first trade-in of the week is James Sicily in for Harry Sheasel, as I just really like this run that he's got. He's got Richmond and North, and if we look at those two, you're probably going to be wondering, Richmond, yep, here we go, 108 and 29. Not as good as Gold Coast, but Gold Coast have, who do they have, Gold Coast? Um, let's just go to Miller should, um, Melbourne. They have Melbourne. I don't like anyone on Melbourne, especially with Oliver, Petrarca, Gorn. I'm not getting in because he doesn't really apply there. If you actually go to... Um, uh, clubs, go to Melbourne, you go to L3, you got Neil Bullen as their second best player in their last three, if you go to averages in general, you got, um, I am not picking Viney at 669k, Trent Rivers could be an interesting one, but even him, I'm not picking him, um, just because of the inconsistency, so, uh, yeah, I just don't like any of their players, and that's why I will be not, um, going anywhere close to that. Um, as that would leave me a liability on the uh, defender bench anyway, um, as I don't really like Martin as well. 
Um, so that's why I think Richmond is almost the better matchup against this week, just because they actually have some players that can score, and that'll be Hawthorne's matchup this week. So Hawthorne play Richmond. I really like Sicily's odds just because he's a high turnover um, player. We to, um, scorer, sorry, and he also does do a little bit of kick-ins. If we look at where are they? They are here. If we go open link and new tab, we go to here, and then we go to turnovers. You'll see James Sicily 66 and 14. So he scores 80 points in turnovers. It's the correct split. It's very eerily similar to what happened with Nick Newman. Um, as you see here, 98 last week against Carlton, who Carlton, if we go to here, were actually down here, but that split is coming massively in that turnover split, I would think. Um, so that is really good. And then last time out against North Melbourne, he did score a 66, which was surprising. I won't lie, at Marvel Stadium, but they're playing, are they playing at Marvel or are they playing at um, Blundstone? Uh, let me just check this. They are playing at Unitas, yep. So, um, and Unitas, he's gone 79 when he played, um, I think more forward was this? Um, and then has he played any other games at Utahs? I don't think so. But I just really like the odds of um, him scoring really, really well. And he also scored a 137 against Richmond at the MCG, which if we look here at James Sicily, I believe that is where they are playing the Tigers at the MCG. So yeah, I really like the odds of him scoring really well. So um, I'm hoping that doesn't fail. Um, then we go Nick, Nick Dacos. I have to hold him at this point pretty much. And yeah, he's got an annoying matchup against Brisbane where I expect him to get the berry tag. But against Melbourne, he could honestly run riot. I know that um, Neil Bullen has tagged him before, but honestly, it... Is it even worse Mel is it even worth Melbourne tagging at that point? Um so yeah, we'll see how that goes, honestly. They may just let Neil Pullen run free and just try and kick some goals in his last game. Um but yeah. We'll see how that goes. Um and just hoping Nick Dacos can put up two good scores. Then we go down here. Whoopsie, might have given away a little bit, even though it's obvious. Um, Errol Golden, just hoping he can get back to form against Essendon. I'm pretty sure Essendon should be a decent enough run for him. 117 against them last time, but yeah, let's just hope he can put up a decent score. Josh Dunkley, he has the Collingwood and then the Essendon matchup. If we go to, I think it's this one, go to Collingwood. Uh, they are now a, they flipped it very, very quickly on his head. Remember when they were a really good matchup here, like in the red, in the green on both? Um, that was just for the Nick Newman matchup and they flipped it just like that. Um, but now they're a really good um to, uh, kick inside, sorry. So uh, guys like a Zorko could do really well here. Um, but then also they're a really good, um, they're a decent enough uh, side for on ballers. So that'll be interesting for Dunkley. Um, then you got Bond against North Melbourne. I'm pretty sure this is also another really good matchup as well. We're a North. North here, um, pretty much net neutral, which is a neutral, which is a good thing for on ball is that they're not um, a really good uh, kick inside. So that's a really good thing to see. Um, but they're also, because I don't have um, Dale. Uh, yeah, so I don't have Dale and stuff. So that'll be pretty good, um, hopefully. And But they're really good in, um, they were a decent side to play in stoppages as they're plus 20 overall. But I mean, and then again, Western Bulldogs are plus um, 46. So maybe just being a little bit on average um, in the stoppages of all right. Hopefully it's just Tristan Cherry just smashing it straight to Bontempelli and then tackling him or and then Bont getting in an ineffective kick away. That would be a good thing. But anyway, um, then we go down. Uh, Zach Butters, he has Adelaide. No, Adelaide are sort of an iffy matchup in general, um, as you see here, iffy matchup. So hopefully they just sort of give away some points. Um, then you got Tom Green against... Who, do they, who does he have? He's got Fremantle. If we go to Fremantle here, they are one of the toughest sides to play against, as you see here. They're really hard for midfielders and they're really hard for transition teams. So, um, yeah, it should be a tough matchup, I would expect, for Whitfield and Green. But hopefully they can just sort of uh, pull it out of the bag. 
Then you have um, Rosie and Saron. We talked about Rosie in terms of Butters. He has the um, Adelaide the um, showdown. And then you've got uh, Sarong against GWS. And that is a pretty tough matchup, I would suspect. Yeah, they're negative pretty much across the board. Um, so that isn't necessarily the greatest matchup. But hopefully they can just... Um, uh, Frio can... He can go forward, kick some goals to sort of get a 100 score. Um, Mana probably won't be needed this week. Then we've got... Um, yeah, I don't think Mana will be needed as... Um, bu- 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 let me just check here. Um, Humphreys. Wait, if I put... You know what I can do, which will probably help a lot more? I can do this, which will do that. Um, which means that if Martin is um, good then I can, um, yes, that is the better scenario, just because in case Martin does score really well here, Sean Maker locked in there, uh, re-locked in the defender, which means I have more maneuver, <clears throat> excuse me, more maneuverability, so that if Peatling scores really well, or if Peatling has a stinker, then I can chuck Lawson Hump, I can do this, and then chuck, um, well, do that, and then... Um, sure, Mana will go straight into this Philippu spot and Philippu ends up on the bench. I just need to check the timings of that. Um, okay, so yeah, GWS play there. So I'll basically know by about Saturday at 4.30 or so how this team completely stacks up because there will be a lot of swapping just trying to get the best score out of here, out of the D6 and F6 lines effectively is what I'm just trying to get the best score out of, um, and yes, obvious, and they'll have to be sorted by the time that the St. Kilda game kicks off, as both of those um, covering scores are St. Kilda players. So that at least makes it a very simple thing that they're both um, in the same game. Um, and then also, if Rowan Marshall scores really well, then Tristan Cherry just goes to the emergency. We play Harry Barnett as the captain, etc., etc., and that's the way that I get all my scores that I want. Um, bring in Tristan Cherry against a, um, I actually need to check this. Uh, who is he, who is he rucking against? Sam Darcy is full ruck. I don't think we've ever seen that. And then backup ruck is probably, probably Norton, I would suspect, or maybe Lob, but Lob would throw off a massive structural change. So, um, we'll see what happens here. Obviously not Caleb Daniel. That's a, that's funny, but, oh, you know what they're going to do? They'll put Rory Lobb into the ruck, and then they'll chuck Alex Keith down back, um, or James O'Donnell. But James O'Donnell looks could be sub potentially, so they'll chuck one of them down back when Rory Lobb is in the ruck. But I really like Tristan Cherry in the ruck against those guys, and so yeah, really like that. Real Marshall plays against Geelong, who have. Um, bah, 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 where's Geelong? Give me Geelong. Here we go. They've got Reese Stanley in there as well as Mark Blickovs against um, who did Geelong play last week? They played for a remantle and the Darcy here who, oh no, sorry, it was Jackson who only, um, whoopsie, stuff that up. Jackson who scored a 76 on 24 hitouts um, and I don't know who back up rucked for them. But he didn't score necessarily the greatest. But, I mean, it's Luke Jackson. He just decides to score and he wants to score. He doesn't actually really conform to anything, it seems like. Um, so, yeah, now we move on to the forwards. Sam Flanders has Melbourne, which is probably actually a really good matchup. It's just the Rucks are, like, perfect matchups this week. Yeah, that should be a really good matchup for Sam Flanders, which is a good thing. Need him to get back to his best. Dane Zorko has uh, Collingwood. Again, that isn't the greatest matchup. Um, as you see here was Collingwood, as we said, with the Josh Dunkley one. Um, probably better suited for Josh Josh Dunkley type of scoring. But then again, it's um, kicking, so it should help um, Dane Zorko, especially if they start just missing everything. Corba has Sydney. Sydney are an iffy matchup. Um, so hopefully he can just find the better of that. Um, and hopefully he has his role return, as he may be one that we scrap in the last game of the round. Uh, sorry, last round of the year. If we just go back up here, you've got Caldwell finally back on ball. Well, he was on ball, I think, last week. He just struggled to score. Um, Isaac Keeney, hopefully he can pull out a masterclass in the first three quarters so we don't have to rely on a last quarter effort. Um, Dylan Moore has a really positive matchup again against Richmond and also North Melbourne. So he's one that could end the season, honestly, 
he could end the season as the best um, L3 out of anyone. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens just because of the two matchups he's got alongside a 132 against Carlton. And then you've got Peatling here who are all emergency there. And then you've got also, um, I will try and see if Peatling sucks, probably like a sub 60 score, then we'll chuck Manor on there as Manor should be able to get 60 plus against uh, St. Kilda, I would suspect. But anyway, that is the video there. If you did enjoy the video, remember to like and subscribe. Turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.